<clears throat> okay, this is me. I'm sorry, y'all. It fell down. Okay, y'all. This is me, Jennifer McCray, the J, the J Shrink, and we're going to talk about part two of the Amber Geiger, Amber Geiger trial. But we're going to focus on the uh, the victims of the trial more than since we talked a lot about on the first part the victims, and we're going to talk about the seven components of grief which were a modified version of the late Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. And, um, okay, so we talked about, there was seven, okay, we talked about this is the brother, this is that quick forgiveness, impulsivity, and we was telling you he did this. One of the reasons maybe why he did this is because he's young. And, you know, he's impulsive and spontaneous. And his brain has not matured enough where he can, you know, where the logical, the judgmental, emotional part is fully developed. So he just did the childish thing and just ran over there and hugged her. So part of it may be, you know, the aspect. The aspect of the brain here. I'll show you a little brain. Here's the brain here. copy of the brain and um this part of the brain that makes us human that part is not fully developed until a person is 21 and he's only 18 and he's driven you know by passion and probably religiosity and things like that and uh, we also talked about what was improper of the judge for her to be hugging on a defendant, a felon, a convicted murderer, um, and then handing, handing her a Bible and instructing her on which passage to read to get her through living life in prison. Now, in all my days that um, I have uh, been in a courtroom on some of my cases, I have never, ever seen the judge, even if it was a, a, a child, uh, hug a defendant, you know, even if, say, if the child was the plaintiff. I never, I've never, I've never seen this. I've never, and I've even been to court when I was doing sexual assault cases and things like that. And I've never, ever seen anything like this. And this is totally inappropriate, and they're going to file charges against her. And I don't know what was going through her mind. I don't know if she's being Angel Mima. She's feeling sorry for this little white girl. And all the nasty things that she heard, the violence, the racist uh, remarks that the girl made about black people, why is she hugging her? Is this that slave mentality that Mammy, uh, Miss, Miss Ann um, type of scenario? I'm not quite sure. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure, but she does need to be sanctioned. This is unprofessional. This is improper, and um, it's just not right, okay? So let me get this these to you so you can see. Okay, let me, let me pull them up a little bit more for you, can see, for you to see. Okay. Oh, and then, 
back a little bit more. As I told, just gonna hold it up. It's gonna hold it up for you, so you can see it. Okay. As I told you before, these are the seven seven stages of grief, and these people are in grief. And like I said before, black people have a tendency to bypass this state, the, the stage that a normal human being who's been, who's, who's, well, they have the added advantage of trauma, not just grief alone. But these are the normal steps that a person would take. There are seven steps. Okay, so the first one is shock. And shock would be just paralysis. Just hearing that, the, just when they heard uh, from the police that the son, that Botham uh, Jean was innocently shot in his home by a police officer. It's just shock. They just can't take it. They just don't know. It's just like, Mm, just numbness, just, you know, they got that, the, the first part of the two years. And, um, you know, she since the 10 years, right? And she served already two. And the second is denial. Okay. Denial is trying to avoid the inevitable. That's their thinking. Well, no, this didn't happen. It's not happening. Jean, uh, Botham Jean is still there. Um, it just can't be happening to me, you know. Why is this happening to me? Uh, what made this happen? How could this happen? Okay. And the third stage is anger. And um, black people have a propensity to, when they're victim, when they're, uh, um, when, when the person, let me see, I'm trying to get the word, when the, uh, when the victimizer is white, they have a tendency to hold that anger in. So they get frustrated, raw emotions. And these people said they're very Christian. And they said, um, they said they wanted to, um, they wanted to find, they wanted, they, they, they were angry that he died. How he died, how she murdered him. How she mistook everything for him. How they let her and other white people go. And just anger at the situation. Anger at her. Anger at her lying. So in that respect that they, would, they show anger. Bargaining. That's a little different. That's the trial. <laughs> Bargaining is the trial. That's trying to let other people um, help you to find a way out. You know, like bargaining with God. God, um, please, you know, make make our family whole again. It's just, it's too much. I just need something to remind me of him. I need I need justice brought to him. I need, you know, all these types of things. And depression, and we already all know that it is. Anytime someone died, and specifically if there's been a traumatic event, 
like what happened to the uh, to the to the Joneses. There's going to be trauma in in addition to a depression. Depression is like the uh, uh, bottom is always in their mind. No matter where they look, no matter they may see going to his apartment or see something that reminds them of Botham. And they'll just get depressed, they'll cry, they'll just, why Why did he leave us? Why did she do that? They use, they, they lose um, the sense of, of any kind of pleasure activity. They may have problems sleeping. They may have problems uh, not eating. They may feel worthless that they couldn't do anything to prevent this. They may feel hopeless and just that's depression, you know, just every, every little thing reminds them of Botham. Okay, so testing is seeking realistic solutions. That's where the trial comes along. That's where the trial effed up. Because we had all these black people, okay, it's like the plantation here, and this one little uh, blonde white woman, and um, we were going to see, we were testing to see here if they're going to let her off like they let all the other um, police officers off who were innocent and didn't have weapons. They got off, okay, and the testing, the test, this is a test case, really, um, because it's a white woman, and um, all these black people, the, you know, stroking her hair, and that's what the bailiff that was supposed to take her was doing, the judge hugging her, the, giving her the Bible, quoting the Bible, the, um, you think that woman cares, and the, the victim in uh, impact statement. She didn't even say, I'm sorry. I'm remorseful. Please forgive me. They just took it upon themselves as just like field slaves or something. Just that slave mentality just to go and comfort her. You know, because, and the, I'm sure the judge, because uh, she knows her from the standpoint of being a police officer, she might have testified in her court. But anyway, so testing. And the test did come out. They didn't come out the way they wanted it to. They knew she was going to get some kind of manslaughter or murder. They, But they weren't sure because in the back of their head, she may get away like uh, there's so many of those cops. I can't name them all and I'm not going to name them all. But all the ones that got away. So the test did prove that the jurors believed that he did get go in her. She did go in his apartment and innocently broke and entered her apartment, in his apartment, and um, shot him dead. And they tried to use something called a cast. To, uh, uh, effect where if a person sees a, a, goes into a place that, that's unfamiliar and that's familiar they think familiar and they see a dark uh, shadow or something they're trained to shoot them as police officers you know those target things so it tested that it, it, no they weren't satisfied they were satisfied that she was found guilty but they were not they were not satisfied that she only got ten years and two years taken off for time. Um and even the father, he said that he wanted to be her friend. And I I I, I this just slave mentality. I don't I don't know. These black people, I, I, I just don't understand that when dealing with these white offenders, you know. And they don't even ask for it. They just, just give it to them. So the test did prove that uh, 
She didn't get the sentence that everybody wanted her to get, but she did get a stiff enough sentences till when she's, she goes uh, into jail to court, she's going to have to be in protective custody because she's a cop who killed a black man. And uh, black women in jail, they're not going to take that. They're going to beat her down. Okay. So all that led up to the testing. In the last phase, and this is something that uh, Brandt, John, didn't do. He went straight from shock to acceptance. And he said different people uh, process things differently. No. This is based on uh, normalized, randomized study for years and years. People go through they, these stages, but they go through them in different you know, they may switch a little bit, but they're not going to switch to acceptance from any of the other six. They're not going to just go from there, from shock to acceptance. No, they're not going to go there. They're, uh, it's like they, their emotions are in, um, in, well, that's when they were in denial, their emotions are in remission and they don't, you know, have the know with all to, uh, what to do about the situation. But acceptance, that's when you finally gone through all these phases and it may take weeks, may take months, may take years. Because this has been, what, the second year to go through acceptance? But it's still kind of early because you had the, 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 uh, the court to start the stage all over again. You know, they had the stage when he first died, but then they, have, they had to re-enter this whole seven-stage process during the trial to process and understand the, the, the trial. And um, acceptance, that's um, when you are totally and completely at ease, at peace. You you forgive you've gone through all the stages. It's not spontaneous. It's not to just I don't know to see yourself on TV. I don't know what 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 the problem is. You people they seem to want to see themselves on TV too. So um but the mother not but the father and the brother yes and the baby brother. Acceptance when you can get all this you accept the sentence. You accept that she's going to go to jail immediately. She's going to serve her her jail time, although it may be suspended, and it might also she might get good behavior in about five years. So um, so you can go on with your life and just keep um, Botham John in their hearts. They're completely accepted. Completely forgiven, uh, but they want justice done, like the mother said. She can understand the, the acceptance, but she wants justice done. So these are the seven stages that you go through when you're in grief. And theirs was traumatic because what happened to him, it was just vicious. The woman was racist. The woman was cruel. The woman was having affairs with her sex sexting when she went in the house. She made up all this kind of excuses about uh, she mistaking the house for theirs. But anyway, so they're on the path to acceptance. I'm not sure if they're all there. They're not. I don't think they're there personally. From, you know, from what I've seen in, 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 in the field when I was working. But I think they're getting close to that. They're getting close to that. I think they're at the testing mode now. So, um, that's what it is, what it is. Okay. Please. Subscribe and comment on this video. 
I will I will um, appreciate it very much because we get we get paid and everything by how many subscribers that we have. And I'm still the one that's been on here talking about mental illness and black people in current events and still have those thousands of views and 18 subscribers. I guess the people that I know, they don't understand what how to subscribe. I try to explain to them, but they just don't know. So, I just wanted to say that uh, this was a tra travesty. Uh, the woman was effed up. Uh, she was already hyped up to kill. But my 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 emphasis is always on the plaintiffs, on the victims, because of this long seven step process you have to go through. You may go through it, you know, like I said, go straight through it, or you may uh, flip flop, and you know, and go through different stages. But um, a normal human being will go through those stages. An immature, uh, in shock, uh, person, uh, would just go straight from, you know, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you. Even though the person, like at the, um, dinner roof trial, when they were saying that a lot of them are young men that age. So that tells you something there. I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you. No, 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 no. Forgiveness and grief, it's, it's a phase you have to go through. You can't just do that. What's, what you're doing is you're repressing and you're stuffing your feelings when you just do like he did, ran over there and start hugging on her. Okay? You're repressing those feelings. And those feelings are going to come out some way, one way or another, either destructively or positively. So that's about all I have to say about those seven um, stages and how it relates to the Botham Jean family. Um, and I hope it's been official because I know the other stuff that y'all, other videos y'all seen was just about the crime and the crime scene, uh, Amber. But this one is about victimology and how uh, victims process trauma and grief. Okay? So, um, I'm going to need y'all to do this. Subscribe and comment to this video. And thank you and have a nice night.